This is Edgar Payne, an early 20th century painter who is best known for his plein air paintings of the American West, including commissioned artwork of the Sierra Nevada Mountains. He did draw other subjects, however, like the ocean and boats. Despite there being many interesting components in his paintings, the vibrant colors and impressionist style of Payne's artwork are what I will be trying to emulate today. Although the original is an oil painting, I will be using Clip Studio Paint, a digital art software. But you can use any medium you want. This video also has timestamps, so feel free to jump to any section. For this color study, I will be using this artwork as my reference. To start off, I drew a very basic line art of the composition. This line art can be very rough, as it will only be used to help me place the background colors. How do you choose what details to keep and which to exclude? Well, you'll want to group the painting by either major colors or subject matter. With the painting that I studied, you can see that the painting has a very clear foreground, rocks and trees, midground, forest mountains, and background, snowy mountains. I also added a bit more detail to the foreground, as I was worried about the shapes of the rocks and trees. Next, I applied a mid-tone color to the background. In retrospect, the back mountains are a little bit lighter than the middle mountains, which is a problem. No worries though, I fixed this later when refining the image. As a quick side note, you might be wondering how I achieved this slight variation in colors in my midtones. This is from a feature known as color jitter. Some programs, like Heavy Paint, come with it automatically applied, but you'll have to add it manually for other programs. In order to accomplish this in Clip Studio Paint, click on the wrench icon in the bottom corner of the brush. Next, click on the color jitter option. From here, it might be tempting to crank all of the bars to the maximum, but I would advise against this. If the hue or saturation is set too high, the brush will only produce a mess of random colors that won't be harmonious or similar to your intended color. Instead, move the bars only slightly and test out the brush to make sure that the color you chose and the color produced by the brush are similar enough. After finishing the midtones, I move on to rendering the background. This is where I truly start to reference Edgar Payne's artwork. In the mountains, you can see that the shadows have a blue tone and that the highlights have a warmer, more orange tone. This is a good way of creating visual contrast without changing the values of the image too much. I may have taken this a bit too far in the final image, however, and you should probably avoid that. Something else I made sure to do was to add this orange line around the mountains. In oil painting, this line comes from an orange or sepia underpainting, which is not completely painted over. You can do underpainting in digital art as well, but if you're like me and forgot or just want to save time, just add the orange manually. And with some more refinement in the sky, a couple of layer blending modes that are admittedly a bit too much, we're finished! To sum things up, to draw vibrant backgrounds, you should look to contrast cool colors with warm colors, and add color variety through both very saturated and very dull colors. Of course, you can apply this to much more than just backgrounds. Here is a small example of a portrait drawn with these concepts in mind. Hopefully, these tips brought you some help, and thank you for watching! I already have way too many artists that I want to study next, but you can always suggest some more in the comments. I'll see you next time!